today? Not at all, not at all. Um, the verdict is obviously nothing that we work for, nothing that the Nietos deserve, much less that the community of San Francisco deserves. You know, it's a sad day for my clients in the Atos, but it's an even worse day for the city of San Francisco. And how come? I mean, this this was a bigger case than just what happened here. Obviously, uh, this case signifies that Louder for the people we, in the back. Apparently we, want to hear a, you. we apparently as a community are ready and prepared to accept officers gunning down people in public parks under a hell of 59 bullets when the physical evidence shows otherwise in terms of what the officer's claims are. But as I have often said, it's pretty tough sometimes to convince a child there's no Santa Claus, and apparently it was the same for this jury, but there's actually cops out here who violate the law, violate the rules, and it resulted in somebody being killed. We've heard some complaints that the jury was comprised mostly of white people, and that they feel that that was the reason why this particular verdict was reached. Do you agree? Well, you know, my feeling is this. You have to be able to understand and appreciate uh, everyone's experience in order to be a jury. Uh, I can't say that they didn't, but what I do know is that for those people who are looking to come to court, looking for justice, it's always uh, appreciated when you feel that the jurors can understand your experience. And so for people who have put their faith and reliance in the justice system, this is a hard pill to swallow. What about the Nietos? I know they must have been extremely disappointed uh, at the outcome today. Uh, what were you saying to them after all this happened? You know, the Nietos, obviously they wish for something much more, but the Nietos through the trial and through this process, at least the truth got out. Because until going through this process of the trial, the public didn't know what took place. They were under the impression that here's a person who was acting erratic and doing things that jurors, that, that witnesses, third party witnesses, independent, saw that he was not doing. As to take the words of one juror, I mean one witness, he was just a guy. He was just a guy on the hill enjoying his burrito. And at the end of the day, he wound up with 18 bullet holes in it for enjoying his burrito. What did you find out in the building? Well, you know, this this case has galvanized the community, uh, and so that community has to continue to fight for justice. So while this is one uh, chapter that doesn't have the type of ending that we would like, it's far from over in terms of writing the book for justice. What does it take to, to beat the cops in a case like this? What does it take? I mean, how much more evidence do you need? You know, that's a, a good question. You know, the type of evidence that you may need may be a video, but then we've seen that even when there are videos, people are still not prepared to accept that officers sometimes do bad things. So uh, I don't know what we need from our perspective. It may be from the other side. What do officers need in order not to engage in this type of conduct? Or better yet, what do jurors have to understand in order to appreciate that the people that they're paying to protect them will and sometimes do violate the laws? Uh, I, can I hear the questions again? I'm sorry. I was scared. She said, I'm what sorry. do you think it is about why the jurors went the other way? What do you think? Why would they do that? You know, I, I, it, would, it would cause me to speculate, but then speculation is what, what, what much of the defense case was about. We're speculating as to how a taser that officers are claimed were on could be photographed at the scene being off. It was about speculating about how a person who they claim had their hands out in front of them actually has a wrist bone in his pocket. They speculated as to how that could happen. You know, um, so uh, from our perspective, we had clear evidence, physical evidence, outside of the fact of any uh, witnesses supporting our case. So what will it take? What, what would a person accept? I, I don't have the answer to that at this point. Have you said what you're going to appeal and what would be the main issue you're going to Well, you know, at this point in time, uh, we're considering all our legal options and everything's on the table. Uh, I think the community right now, those who are stand for justice, are really trying to assess where do you go from here. Because this case is not the only case wherein San Francisco police to officers are being accused of engaging in misconduct. This is not the only case where I think it's been proven that they've killed somebody unlawfully. Alex Nieto, unfortunately, was just one more notch on the San Francisco Police Department's belt, especially when you have one of the officers that had already killed somebody previously prior to this incident. You know, so uh, the community uh, of those who are stand for justice will have to figure out where we go from here. This jury wasn't allowed to hear issue, broader issues or problems with the San Francisco Police Department. Um, that department's efforts to uh, redraft their use of force policies in response to shootings like this. Can you speak to the broader issues in the SFPD and if this case is emblematic of those? Well, clearly right now, uh, SFPD is on the 
the map, the radar, and the focus of the Department of Justice. But it's been on the it's been the focus of the community for much longer than just this one particular case. There are number after number after number of scandals that have rocked SFPD, and yet you have the police officers union still coming out in defense of what are essentially our reprehensible conduct by its members. So, uh, yeah, the jury may have been enlightened to hear more about the conduct, but at the end of the day, with this case, we're here to talk about what happened to Alejandro Pienta. Now that this case is over, though, is there a broader effort by your office, by you, uh, by people involved with this case to talk about problems, bigger issues with the SFPD? Well, we've been talking about these issues. You know, these are not issues that in the communities that are directly affected by these things are swept under the rug or not known. The question is, is the broader public ready to step in and take an action and take a stand for justice? So for those people who have suffered a loved one like the Nietos or Emma Clark Perez's family or uh, Mario Woods' family and other list, long list, too long of a list of names of persons who have been killed, maimed or abused at the hand of a police department who refuses to to actually acknowledge and then discipline officers who engage in that type of conduct. The question is, what will it take for the good officers to come forward well. and say, enough is enough? Do you think the verdict would have been different if there would have been maybe a Latino or a black juror in there? Well, I think that, you know, the verdict should have been different no matter who was on the jury. We think that we, we produce an overwhelming amount of evidence, physical evidence, uncontroverted evidence. They claim a man's hand was in front of him but yet his wrist bone is in his pocket. They claim a taser was on and pointed at them and fired at them, but not a single officer says that they saw it fired, nor did a single officer see the taser wires in terms of right there when it happened. So the issue is when you have officers whose stories are not matching up, and then you're able to demonstrate and show through the physical evidence that it's just a flat out, a flat out fabricated lie, what will a jury need to accept more than that? They say that uh, there were no holes in the jacket. The city attorney said there were no holes at that area in the jacket. What do you, what do you think about that? And, yes, I, I think a lot about that because one of the things that we've discussed about this jacket that uh, had so much attention brought to it is the medical examiner, which is a city and county employee, never took pictures of that jacket. But in her report, she did indicate that the jacket sleeve had bullet essentially defects or effects of showing that the bullets had hit the edge of the city. So, you know, from our perspective, where was the jacket? I asked the expert that they hired, the $40,000 expert, show me a picture that you, uh, of the jacket that you looked at. They couldn't do it. Do you think that the issue was maybe some of her record as a medical examiner and that was kind of touched on in court? Do you think possibly somebody else did part of the autopsy? Well, you know, she under oath said that she did this autopsy. But, you know, I'm not her employer. What I am is that I am an attorney who's seeking justice for my client. So, uh, you know, that's something for the city and county of San Francisco to, to examine further. Where does the accountability stop? Is this, a, it should, is it time to fire Chief Sir? Is it in the mayor's office? I mean, uh, there's obviously serious problems, this case aside, in the police department. No one's being held accountable. Right, and that's a problem. You know, when you have a lack of leadership and a lack of accountability, then unfortunately these are the type of things that are happening. And these are the type of things that are essentially sanctioned by those persons who are trusted to keep people accountable. So in this situation right here, what you have is essentially a green light to fire 59 bullets in a residential and public park setting and result in someone being dead. You know, so it's, it's a sad day, like I said, for the city and county of San Francisco. Do you think Francisco. this basically creates a precedent for other police officers to do the same? Well, it's one more chink in a long list of chinks in that armor that officers essentially can rely upon to say, hey, I can do what I want, make up any type of story to justify it, and I won't be held accountable. But I'm here, those people who stand for justice, Mr. Gray is here, my law office is here, we're gonna continue to fight, we're undeterred. We know that there are good people who will serve on juries, we know there are good people who stand with us within the city and county of San Francisco, across the nation, who are willing to stand up, fight for justice. Are, are you involved in the Mario Woods case? I am. Well, the big thing we have there is a videotape, you know, so we do have that to rely upon. Uh, however, you saw that in the days after the incident, how it was characterized, what he was doing. Well, we were able to show by the very same evidence they were relying upon that Mr. Woods had raised his hand and was threatening and being menacing to the officers. We were able to expose that that was just a flat out lie. 
And then we have, you know, the police department backing off of those statements and allegations that they made. So, uh, you know, we have a video there, but more importantly, we have to trust in jurors to do the right thing. Will that be a federal case or a state case? That will also be a federal case. And we may wind up being right here, back in this very building, asking jurors, reasonable, fair-minded jurors for justice again. I look forward to meeting you all here on that day. Thank you. No further questions. Thank you. I'm done. Thank you.